positive to sing a song like this. I do pray that each and every person here in the temple does realize and does understand that this is your world, that you created it, and that, Father, you sent your Son to die on the cross, that, Father, we might inherit the kingdom of heaven. I thank you for each one that's come today. I pray for those that couldn't be here, whether they're working or whether they're sick. Be with them, let them know that, and I pray. Be with our pastor as he brings the word that you put upon his heart. Let our hearts be open to receive that word. Be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 In the way of announcements, just a, a few things that I think we had a whole bunch of things coming up into into November there, so a lot to remember. Um, the first Wednesday in November, November the 1st, those who come on Wednesday night will not have Wednesday night Bible study, November the 1st. It's also All Saints Day, but that's not the reason why we're not having Wednesday night Bible study, but the 1st of November is, uh, we will not have that on November 1st. The 5th of November, Sunday morning at 2 a.m., Daylight saving time begins, so you set your clocks back uh, an hour. So that means Juju has to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and set a clock back. <laughs> no, <laughs> probably. <laughs> no. Before you retire, bed Saturday night, you set your clocks back an hour. When you wake up Sunday morning, you'll be right there. But if it goes back one hour, not forward now, so you get an extra hour of sleep. Um, the 10th of November, the Veterans Day is observed, and the actual Veterans Day is the 11th of November. Uh, we will be having our Thanksgiving banquet here at Bayou Baptist Church on the 12th of November. I do have a, a sign-up sheet for those that know what they're going to bring. Uh, a few of us have signed up, so I'll put that in the back, and you can put your name and See whatever you want to bring, uh, if anybody would like to do that. That would be on the 12th of November, uh, following the morning worship. Uh, the runoff for uh, the election on some matters that still have not been decided will be November the 18th. We still got your Attorney General and some other things that have to be decided upon. So it's still a, a, an important time because of the Attorney General and other matters and other things that will be on it, but there's going to be a few, so they projected that even less people will be turning out uh, than the regular thing, since, since there's not much on the ballot itself coming November the 18th. But it is, nevertheless, still an important time. Uh, the 20th through the 26th of November, there's no school uh, for the Thanksgiving holidays. The 22nd which is the day before Thanksgiving. We will not have Wednesday night Bible study on that day. Uh, and then actually, of course, Thanksgiving this year falls on, a, on the 23rd, which is always a, a Thursday, but it's the 23rd, so they will be having that. In the kitchen, there is um, the church directory. Uh, you can take a look at that if you'd like to make any changes on it or add or delete anything that you would like to put on for the church directory. Uh, so that's, that, that's in the kitchen. You can do that. Um, and then in the front here, we do have calendars um, for sale for $5. Everybody says it's already so soon, but you got to remember, it's already October, and then we only got November and December, and that's it. I mean, so you want to get them earlier rather than later. Uh, so anyway, so we do have calendars that we, uh, we sell here. We don't make anything off of it. It's $5 each. And, uh, uh, and then, of course, everybody knows the bottom, so they're good appointment calendars for people. So we, we have 50 of them, and uh, I think when they're gone, they're going to be gone. And so I think that'll take care of almost anybody and everybody here, but you know, how many you want. So we're on the honor system. The box is in the front of the pew, and all you do is you put $5 for each calendar in the box and take uh, for how many, how many uh, you pay for, and just take those. Um, the financial report for September, 
Some have been given out. If not, there's some back in, where, where's it at? Where's the rest of them? In the foyer in the back. So uh, the financial report, you will see some things on there. Uh, if you have any questions on the financial report, you can ask any kind of questions, but just to let you know ahead of time, um, you see a big expenditure the insurance for the year uh, was due this year, so we paid that, and, that, and we still owe some more on that as soon as they give me a bill, like maybe $1,000 more uh, that we have to pay. And then as you notice, also the, the AC repair, the 3500 we had to put new uh, A-coils in both of the units upstairs in the back. Uh, for the back units as well, just to let you know ahead of time uh, why the uh, $3,587 is there, and that's how much it costs for both units at the same time. Both A-coils in the units had leaks in them, so they had to replace them. Uh, and so that was done. So, uh, and that was done under, um, under warranty as well. It would have cost a whole lot more had it not been on the board. It, it would have, I don't know, I think it would have cost something like $7,000 just to replace both of them. You know. It could have been more, but anyhow, I'm just, I want to shock anybody, but that's on the warranty, so uh, thankfulness, that was it. But if you have any questions on them, please, we, you know, we do have a very transparent and anything that you, any questions that you may have on the financial report, um, with the expenditures, anything, please feel free to ask. You're not going to offend anybody. You're not going to offend me. You're not going to offend Renee or anybody. This is open for everybody. Uh, so this is this is where where we're at. So you can look at this and at your leisure. Again, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, any other anything else we need to be aware of of anything else going on in our city. Uh, the only other thing I can remember is next Saturday and Sunday um, there is the, the Slido Street Fair in Old Town. So be aware of that. That's, just, that's next Saturday and Sunday, um, of course, during the day from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock or whatever time they get out there uh, and leave. So it's next Saturday and Sunday. Um, I don't know of anything else. Anything, anything else need to come before us as far as anything else here or in our <coughs> If nothing else, before Mr. Al comes, let me share with you uh, a, a very familiar song, one I haven't sung in a while, but one that um, it's always a favorite of mine and a lot of many other people too, it is well with my soul. <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, uh -huh. 
with your soul today as well. I pray today that you truly know Jesus Christ. And that is the only way that it can be well with your soul is through him and what he has done. So let us continue then as we sing unto the Lord hymn number 445, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Debbie Garrett's family in Kentucky as well, a family 
brothers, family members, Sister Beverly and others as well uh, there in Kentucky, just continue to pray for them. So, um, how's uh, everything with Landon? He's doing great. He started a trial Friday. Okay. He'll be in Memphis for a month. Um, wow. Starts okay. it. And yes. then we'll get it all worked out. Right. Right. Yes. But it, it, he should be on this trial for about two years. Okay. It's supposed to shrink the tumor. Okay. They've had great success with it. So. Okay. Well, good. We're just, praying for it. We just pray for that, for the medicine and everything, and for the power of the Lord to, to, do, to do healing work. Yeah, he got up there on Sunday and they got settled in and had uh, numerous tests and labs. Right. And yes. They started medication on. Okay. Friday and he's doing well. Well, good. Well, good. We just continue to pray for them and, and for the family. We sure will. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Also, uh, do be uh, continue to pray for Buddy as well. Buddy Garrett, as he too will be facing uh, probably some type of um, um, either surgery or uh, whatever. He has a malignant tumor on his back, melanoma. So. So there's no telling. We really don't know anything like the November. Yeah, I think it's the first week in November. Yeah, first week in November he goes. Uh, he goes back to MD Anderson. They're going to operate. Oh, they're going to operate. They're going to do an uh, operation. Oh, they're going to do an operation. Okay. They're going to remove all the spot on the back and then no more after they. Okay. Do that. They're trying to they try to find out if they find a bit, uh, what do you call it there. Uh, Border. Okay. Whether it's cancer inside or yes. outside, and okay. they know that they've got it or not. So, if they did it all, then they don't have to do any other treatment. But if they don't, then they're going to have to do something else. Right. Yes. Okay. So, I don't know what they're going to go from there. Okay. So pray for Buddy Garrett and what he'd be dealing with, as well as Bernie and the family and y'all as well. So just continue to pray for them and what he's going to be dealing with. So be sure. We're other prayer requests concerned. Miss Anna May. Yes, um, we all have a very close friend that passed away this past week, and uh, her name's Pat Torrance. And uh, uh, John her name is what? Pat Torrance. Okay. And uh, so, asking for prayers for John, her, his, her okay. husband, and the family. Sure, we'll remember the family in prayer. Death is always a an uneasy and unwelcome uh, foe. So, yes, so we'll pray for that. Appreciate it. Danny Bryant. You know, the co-workers up there just got diagnosed with Oh, my. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know the co-workers Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll pray for both of these co-workers, especially the family where a loved one is lost. He, Died all of a sudden last week of a heart attack. Getting ready to go to work and that was it. You know, I don't know if he had any symptoms or any anything else before him, but nothing seemed to be okay and well you know it, but just pray for that family and what they deal with as well and the death and the other one who has lung cancer. We sure will. Other prayer requests. Mr. Nate. Our dear friend. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Pray for that. Johnny. Yeah, Frank. Uh I mentioned Wednesday night that uh, Debbie's uh, uncle John yes. is having a heart surgery Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, it's coming Tuesday. And his name again? John Peck. John. Okay. Well, we know John. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll be, we pray for John this coming Tuesday for his heart surgery. We definitely will. Uh, yes. This man. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of people here go back and forth to work in different places, you know, from here to New Orleans or all the way from Mississippi to here and whatever, you know, so so a lot of people and how you doing, Janet? How's how's how you doing? Okay. And how are we doing, Jacob? I'm doing great. Okay. Good, good. good. Other prayer requests. Okay. Anyone else or anything else and uh uh, anyone else that we want to <coughs> acknowledge as far as in prayer, uh, as far as, as with anything, just 
pray for each other, remember each other in prayer during the course of the week. We never know what we're going to encounter, what's going to take place. Pray for our young people today. Many things are changing. Uh, many changes are taking place. I, it's almost seems like it's on a daily basis as far as with everything. So pray for our young people, uh, especially, you know, and they're all, all our young people, uh, many who are all over in school, regardless if it's all the way from kindergarten all the way up into college. Just pray for all of them and, re and remember them all in prayer uh, and what takes place with, with all of that. Uh, Sandy Dio is home today. She's got a little stomach virus. So pray for Sandy Deal. Uh, she said she was doing okay. She just didn't want to. She didn't have anything. She just want to give it to anybody. So she. So just pray for her. And she's a little under the weather. Uh, so so do remember her. Mr. Billy Lynch, and how's the family? Everybody's okay. Dad, Dad is still having trouble coughing. Okay. Okay. Having a new doctor. Okay. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people, yeah, seems like a lot of people right now, allergies are cropping up because there's a lot of weed all over the place, yeah. everywhere, so uh, so a lot of people who have allergy problems, allergic to things, that they, they're going to have that, so yes, so just pray for those many people who are dealing with it on a more severe, because we all have a certain amount of allergies, but many have different ones where it's even more severe to where they even have sneezing, coughing, or whatever the case may be. Uh, so pray for that. Uh, as always, pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Friends, family members, co-workers, strangers, whomever they may be. Uh, pray, pray for them and always give thanks to the Lord for, for, his, for his work and for answered prayer. Always. Anyone else? Got something, CJ? You didn't ask about me. Why are you doing, CJ? <laughs> well, I can see you doing good. I mean, you um, are right here with the cane, and sometimes you're holding up your cane, and you ain't even walking with it. Yeah. I'm yeah. Trust you so much. How many times have you forgotten your cane? Huh? How many times have you forgotten your cane? Oh, many, many times. <laughs> see, that's my point. So I know you're doing good. <laughs> I think you just. I think my memory's coming back. <laughs> That's why he's got his oxygen on today. Oh, is that why? Oh, okay. Because his memory came back. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, good. He had oxygen. So you feel you do you do better with your oxygen? I think so. He thinks so, but, but he doesn't been... know that he doesn't wear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I have a constant reminder. <laughs> right. Sometimes That's what we need. Well, I don't have a wife, thank God. <laughs> she probably saying the same thing. Okay. It goes both ways now. <laughs> but, uh, and, and sometimes we don't need a wife to remind us of things. We need, just need other people to remind us. No, my dog's at home. Oh, well, he don't remind you of anything. All he reminds you of is, is to eat, and that's it. And she stares at me while I'm eating. That's what I'm saying. She wants your food. That's what I'm saying. That's my point. But anyhow, but you're doing good, though. Yeah. We're good. We're glad you're doing well. Linda, how are you doing since he, since he put it up? I'm doing good. Good. Everybody's doing good. I'm still planning on having all this um, celebration. It's just, I'm not ready yet. Okay. That's fine. We, like I said, we'll, we'll, do the, we'll get to that when you, when you feel ready. It doesn't really matter. Maybe after the holidays, I just, I can't get that mindset yet. That's fine. That's fine. Hey, look. We're here. We'll have it. We'll have it and we'll come together and celebrate a life. We sure will. Yes. Yes, Debbie. A prayer of Thanksgiving. Shane and his wife had their little boy. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, Oliver, uh, Oliver Theodore. Okay. How many pounds, you know? It was seven pounds something. Okay. All right. Well, good. Congratulations. When did they have it? October 12th, I think. Okay. They kept it all a secret. They didn't want anybody to know. Oh. It's their first baby, and they were really nervous. And I told you, what everybody to know. They didn't want nobody to know. Oh, yes. Yeah. So they're home doing well. Oh, good. I haven't seen him yet, but I get a bunch of pictures every day. So okay. Awesome. Doing good. Awesome. Tell them congratulations, oh, yeah. and, and that, that, that is awesome. That is awesome. So Let's go, Lord, and pray.
Almighty God, as we come now, Lord, we lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, the many, many things that are going on in, in all our lives, in our families' lives, and the, the different things that are taking place. We just pray and ask for help, grace, and mercy. We pray for our country and the, and, the, and, the, and the shape that it's in is not in good shape, and we pray for your help, grace, and mercy. We pray for our leaders, uh, those in places of power and authority. Lord, we, we lift up the many, many people over there in the Middle East. We pray for our brothers uh, in, in Israel over there, what's going on with that. And we lift up the, the many tragedies and, and the terrible things that are taking place in this battle between the Palestinians and the Israelites, and we, and we pray for that. We pray also for the war that is taking place in Russia, between Russia and Ukraine, and we lift that up as well, and many other places where there is chaos, where there is tragedy and disturbance. We pray for the many other people in different cities and even different states that are dealing with different tragedies or different things that are going on that, that, that is causing chaos or whatever it may be, and we lift them up as well. Traveling mercies for the many people who travel and are traveling. Watch over them, help them, and be with them. Again, we lift up the many, many people that are dealing with different health issues and health problems. We pray for them. We pray for Landon as he is over there in, M in MD Anderson, at, in Me over there in Memphis. Uh, be, be with him, Lord, and, and, and the family. We pray for Buddy as he will be facing surgery for his cancer. Be with him as well. And again, so many others that are, that again, are facing so many medical issues in their lives here and, and elsewhere. And we just lift them all up and we pray for them. Lord, where death has come, and there have been many mentioned where families have or are experiencing the death of a loved one, we pray for your comfort, for your grace, and for your mercy upon the many people who are dealing with the death of a loved one, that you'll comfort them and help them as well. And as always, we give you thanks for all that you've done, and we do pray for the many, many people who truly do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and we pray for their soul whether it's a family member, a co-worker, whether it's a friend or a stranger, whomever they may be, we pray for them. Be with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Let us stand at this time as Mr. Al comes and leads us in our offertory hymn, hymn number 473, More Love to Thee, O Christ.
with, and we ask, Lord, that you will see to it that all is collected, that it's used for the furtherance of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and his death on the cross. God sending his son to save our souls. You know, we must keep in mind the main thing. And the main thing is Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. Always ahead of us. And what our Lord Jesus Christ accomplished there on the cross was an eternal transaction that involved the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three were involved in the saving of our souls. It's amazing. And all of this took place was indeed by the hand of Jehovah God. By the eternal purpose of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you know, this took place before anything was ever created. Before even we were even thought of. Before this earth was ever placed, and whatever was taking place there. Even before Adam and Eve had ever sinned, or anything else was ever created. And this according to the Word of God and what it says in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 18 and following. For we know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold, in other words, with money, that we were redeemed from this empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus, of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. And watch, he was chosen, how when? before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for our sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. It's amazing what's happened. So you, so you see, without the cross, we wouldn't be meeting here. Without the cross, we wouldn't have any hope. Without the cross, and without Jesus, without God's plan, really, what would we be thankful for? Not a thing. Everything comes from the hand of God. Especially 
our soul, the saving of our souls, and what takes place, and the place, and what Jesus has prepared, like he told his disciples, remember, he says, I go, I'm going to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. He's prepared a place for us, and it's a place that we don't even have to toil for. It's already been done. It's already done. All we do is we sleep in death, we wake up, and there's the place. We're in the presence of God and the place that he has prepared. Perfect, without sin, and forever. Such an awesome thing our God has done. I really hope and pray that today, all of you, all of you, truly know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your heart, not just intellectually, but in your heart. And He lives in your heart. And that if not, I pray that before you die, because everyone, all of us are going to die sooner or later. It's inevitable. Or hopefully, maybe the Lord sends a rapture, we go up before Him, then we don't have to worry about that. Then we'll, then we, we'll, we'll, then we'll go with Him before death. But even if not, you know, if not, ask him to come into your heart, into your life today, if, he, if you truly don't know him, and, and know him as Lord and as Savior. And so today we read about this episode that took place. Many interesting things in these few verses here of Luke chapter 23, verses 44 through 49. First of all, notice in verse 44 through 46, notice the cross itself and the death of Jesus on the cross. Now, it was about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. For the sun had stopped shining, and the curtains of the temple were torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Now, understand, contrary to what some people think, Jesus literally died on the cross. He just didn't pass out, didn't swoon, he died. Just like when you, when for some of our, when some of our friends, family members, or whoever, they breathe their last, they die. You go to a funeral and they die. He died a physical death. But before he died that physical death, he took on a punishment that no one could bear, but he did. It was a terrible, terrible time of, of the punishment that took place. And there for six hours, six hours on the cross, from nine o'clock in the morning to three o'clock in the afternoon, there he was on the cross. And here we pick it up. It says the sixth hour until the ninth hour. And that is from in Jewish time frame now, that is 12 noon to 3 p.m. We get the last three halves. I want to say the second part of the first part that was ridiculed. There, there was a lot of things going on. They laughed at him. They joked. Uh, should I say they made fun of him and everything else the first three hours. He had this conversation with the thieves on the cross as well. And, and, and the many things and the, and the sayings of Jesus as well uh, that, it, that had taken place. But here, Jesus, again, he was crucified, not just for three hours, but he was crucified on the cross for these six hours, sustaining our punishment. And all of this is happening in these verses and what we read here in many other places was indeed by the hand of Jehovah God. All of it. All of it. For us. He was on that cross to take our punishment. To deal with sin once and for all. Deal with it. You know, the darkness that we see here, it says darkness came over the whole land. This darkness here was not an eclipse, as many would like to believe. And the reason it wasn't an eclipse is because at that time it was the Passover and there was a full moon. And there's no eclipse during a full moon. And so there was 
So there, this was not an eclipse that took place, nor was it the power of Satan and his dark realm coming over the whole thing as well, because Satan has no power over nature. None whatsoever. He has no power that we, we, that we can sustain, that we see anyhow. Um, he's, he's able to tempt, he's able to deceive, he's able to do many things. But the darkness was God unleashing the judgment upon that point and also unleashing the full extent of his wrath upon the perfect lamb that was sent by God. All of our sins, all of the wrath, all of the judgment, it's all placed upon Jesus Christ at this hour and at this time as well. And indeed, he was the perfect lamb. Remember, remember what John the Baptist said concerning the same Jesus. In John chapter 1 and verse 29, here it says in here from the word of God, it says, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You see, all of the sin was placed upon him. And so, at this point, the darkness was all of our sin. It was all the wrath and the judgment of God. And then we see the cry of Jesus. One of the many, I think there was maybe seven cries of death, seven things that was spoken from the cross. If you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you know, at different times, at different points, he, there he cried out or said many things. Uh, and, I, and I see here where he says, Father, into your hands I commit myself. In another part, he says, Eloi, Eloi, la sabatine, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And there have been many other things in here that he, that he said, and Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Can you imagine? There he was in agony and despair, and still his concern was not for himself, but for us, but for others, the saving of their souls, including... The two thieves on the cross. And you imagine, there he was in the middle. And the two thieves at first were arguing and bickering. And even they joined in with the mockery. And then one of them said, wait a minute. There's something here wrong. I was wrong. This man is innocent. There's nothing wrong with this man. And th that one thief, whichever one it was, he did repent of his sin. And he did put faith in Jesus. And he said, Jesus... He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Can you imagine? There he was, suffering in agony and seemingly in defeat. And he tells this thief, today you will be with me in paradise. Can you say that? Can you really know that for a fact, 100% that if something was to happen to you today, that today you will be with Jesus in paradise, in heaven, with him? Well, I think that thief did. When Jesus told him, today you will be with me in paradise, he was 100% sure, boy, I'm going to be in paradise. He knew it. Because why? Because Jesus said it. And he believed in the words of Jesus. And this is what God says. He says, if you put your faith and your trust in, in Jesus Christ, if you repent of your sin, today, you will be in heaven. Today, you will know for sure, no matter what happens from now on, you'll be in heaven. You'll be with the Lord as well. But the punishment of God was placed upon him during this dark hour. And the absence of it seems that Jesus, for the first time, of God the Father, really put, a, put everything upon him. And then you notice, not only the punishment, but it says the curtains of the temple were torn in two. Now this is very, very significant. Because you see these, this curtain that he's talking about, is not just any particular curtain. This was the curtain. This was the one that went into the Holy of Holies. This was one where only the priest went in to make sacrifice for the people. And it says they were torn in two. 
And not from the bottom to the top, but from the top to the bottom. Signifying what? God came down and he tore out that curtain. He opened it up because of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. And he says, now we're all able to go before God. We're able to make our own talk to God. Now we can talk to God in person. We don't need a priest. We don't need sacrifices. We don't need the altars. Why? Because we're under a new covenant. And that new covenant is Jesus Christ. And because of his death on the cross, and then later his resurrection, and then later his ascension, it's complete. Everything is complete. That's why the other saying it says, it is finished. What was finished? Everything was finished. The work of God for our saving of our souls and mankind was finished. It was all done. It was finished. And we're under the new covenant. And now we can go to Jesus, to go to God through Jesus. He is our mediator. He is the one to whom. And see, this is what it says as well from God's word in Hebrews chapter 9. And in verse 11 and following, and here it says, When Christ came as the high priest of the good things that was already here, he went through a greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made. That is to say, not part of the creation. He did not enter by the means of blood, of goats and calves, which they did on a daily basis, but he entered the most holy place once for all. How? By his own blood. his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. See, the blood, of, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of the heifer sprinkled on those ceremonially unclean sanctified them to, to that which is outward cleansing. But how much more then will the blood of Christ, through the eternal spirit, offer himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from the act that leads to death so that now we may serve a living God. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of the new covenant that those who call those who call may receive the promise of eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. So you see how much and how important this was. Also, also what is said in the Old Testament. And here from God's word in Jeremiah chapter 31. Here too we see, the time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And it will, be, it will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant. Though I was, I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after the time, after that time declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and I will write it in their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. And no longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying, No, Lord, because they will, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. You see, coming from Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 31 and 34, he's talking about what Jesus Christ did at the cross, what God did at the cross through Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God, which what? Which taketh away the sin of the world. Don't you see what took place during that time at the cross, and especially here in these last three hours, Jesus Christ paid the price to set us free. And he did it by his blood. Because he was and is the perfect lamb of God. Such an awesome thing that took place there. And then voluntarily giving up himself. Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Voluntarily. They didn't take it from him. He wasn't a martyr. He died voluntarily for our sins. He died so that we can have eternal life. He gave it up. 
gave it up because he cared, because he loved. This is why we, we read John 3.16, don't we? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Such an awesome God that we have. Then, that didn't, that didn't end everything at his death. Look at what took place then in verse 47. Notice this Gentile centurion. This is important as well. Notice it says, Then the centurion, seeing what had happened, he praised God and said, Surely this man, this was a righteous man. Amazing, isn't it? All of the, as all of this was going on and taking place, something else was happening before their eyes that they didn't even realize. Here we have, I believe, another amazing miracle. A Gentile Roman soldier was convinced and probably and maybe convicted that indeed, that this person who, them, who he was crucifying there in the middle between the two thieves was the Son of God, was a righteous man. You know, he probably observed a lot of crucifixions over time. And yet, there was none that he saw was like this. None. This really amazed him. No prisoner while on the cross had ever conducted himself in such a manner. He heard the prayer of Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He heard the cry of Jesus to the Father, Eloi, Eloi, la sabatine, Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? He heard the promise of the, to the thief, saying, Today you will be with me in paradise. He saw the darkness that came over and hovered over at twelve noon. The earthquakes that took place as well. The words, the way and the manner in which Jesus died. He couldn't ignore all of these things that were going on. What he saw with his own eyes and what he heard with his own ears. It was enough, and I think by the power of God as well, to convince him that this man, Jesus, was indeed a righteous man. You know, in Matthew and Mark, they say that, they say that Mark, and, and especially Matthew, well, Matthew and Mark say the same thing, but they record it as such as this, because I think this too is important uh, as well. In Matthew chapter 27, and, and in verse 54, he says, When the centurion and those with him were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake, and all that is happening, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was... The Son of God. So you see, here we have these Gentile Roman so soldiers, and especially this one here. You know, they began to praise God, it says. They praised God, not Caesar, or not anyone else. You know, is it possible? I don't know, because we wasn't there, and not told to us even later. But is it possible that this Gentile centurion did he, really, did he become the first convert after the death of Jesus, even before Jesus was taken off the cross? It's possible, but I, we don't know. But one thing we do know concerning this centurion and what he said, he's a righteous man, he is the son of God. He did see something different in him that he never saw in anyone else. And again, I mentioned He's probably seen a lot of crucifixions. And he saw something different in this man to whom they had beaten. This man to whom was died, who died on the cross. What about you? You've read the evidence in the Word of God. It's all there, black and white. This is not a made-up story. This actually took place. It actually happened. You have it here. And when you stand before God, you'll be without excuse and say, but no one told me anything. But he will say, you had the word. You read the word. It came into you. You read it with your own, with your own eyes. And you were told and you heard with your own ears. Why didn't you believe? Believe 
what the Word of God has to say for your own sake. And then the last thing we see in this in verse 48 and 49 is the conviction upon the people and what they felt after the death of Jesus Christ. Notice what took place. It says, when all the people who had gathered to witness the sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts. You can just see them going, they beat their breasts here. They beat their breasts and they're walking away or went away. But all those who knew him, all of his followers, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Can you imagine now? It's over. It's done. These are, the, these are some of the same people who had series of emotion all week long from the time of the triumphal entry all the way into the death of Jesus. They were the same ones during the time of the triumphal entry, praising <laughs> God and saying, Oh, Hosanna, son of David, who has come. The same ones praising God. But again, they also, from joy to hatred to anger to ridicule, these are the same ones that some of them said, release for us Barabbas. What do you want me to do with this one called Jesus? Crucify him. Crucify him. Maybe these are some of the same people also who were there mocking and ridiculing. Oh, he saved others. Why can't he save himself? Oh, he did many miracles. Can he do one more? If you are the Son of Man, prove it. Come on down. Prove it. But that was not but that would accomplish absolutely nothing. He didn't come for himself. He came for us. He came to die so that we can have eternal life. By his blood. Now after all of these dramatic events that took place, the darkness, the earthquakes, uh, and, and many other happenings that took place, here it says that they, it says that the witnesses and those who gather around, they beat their breasts. Notice, as it says there, they, took, they, they saw what, that what took place was indeed from God and of God, and they beat their breasts, I think, because of the grief, the guilt, and the fear that they now had upon them. The guilt of, of ridicule and mockery, Son of God. Indeed, if this centurion is right, they thought to themselves, if indeed he was the Son of God, look what we did. We ridiculed, we mocked him. And maybe the guilt and the fear because feeling like, hey, this is God's judgment. Now what is he going to do to us? And what's going to happen? The event now wasn't so funny for them. It wasn't as humorous as they thought. And again, I believe they were convicted. And maybe even later, at Pentecost, when Peter gets up and proclaims to them, maybe some of these same ones, convicted, by what they seen at Calvary, and then Peter getting up and speaking concerning that of Jesus. Maybe some of them became believers. And they were part of the part of those who who looked to Jesus Christ for forgiveness and for eternal life as well. Convicted of it. Once he was crucified as the Messiah. And those who looked on did not believe. But then we have even those who followed Jesus as it says in here. And those women and the, and the men who followed from Galilee stood at a distance and watched. I can only imagine that if, at that point in time that they were shocked and full of grief at the fact that the one whom they thought was the Messiah, the one whom they thought was going to redeem them. But they were looking for a physical redemption, not a spiritual redemption. They looked at it, and they were shocked and grieved into what happened, and probably even said to them, this wasn't supposed to happen. This is not the way it was supposed to end. He came riding on a donkey as the Redeemer. And now here he is, five days later, He's dead on the cross, 
He wasn't supposed to die. He was supposed to redeem us. And he did. This is not how the story was supposed to end. Can you imagine what they thought? Then Sunday came. And you know the story. They were no longer in despair. Now they were really puzzled. Now they were really thinking, what is this really all about? Even doubting Thomas. Unless I put my fingers and touch him, I'm not going to believe. Came to them, and he did, and he showed them that he was, and all put faith in him. See, they were no longer devastated, but now there was joy and happiness, and that changed their lives forever. What about you? Do you have that joy and that happiness in your heart as well by knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as one who died on the cross for your sins, took voluntarily gave up his own life so that you and I can have eternal life. Has he changed your life at all? You know, we know that things are not supposed to happen, but this is how it did happen. This is God's plan. And even from his, from his word, and when Peter got up, before the people. He even told them the same thing over in Acts chapter 2. You know, he said, he said the same thing. God raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted at the right hand of God, and we know he was exalted at the right hand of God. How do we know? How do we know this? Because they saw him at the right hand of God. Because he was seen by the right hand of God. As, 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 we, as we so know that, 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 that as Stephen was seized. And Stephen even told him, and he says, and, they were, as they were, and right before they stoned Stephen, what did he say? I see Jesus at the right hand of God the Father. And that's what Peter here said even before Stephen was, was stoned. Exalted to the right hand of God, he received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what we now see and hear, the power of the Holy Spirit. For David had ascended to heaven, and that said, Lord, sit in my Lord, sit in my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool to your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. And I'm going to say, not all of Israel, but all the people. Jew and Gentile alike. God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and and Christ. He was and is the Messiah. He is the Lord of all, the Master of all. But the question is, is he Lord and Master? Is he Lord and Savior of your life? Do you know him as your Messiah? Not just as a prophet, a friend, or, or some, but is he your Lord and your Savior? Does he live in your life? If not, why not today? And do it today. No one is guaranteed tomorrow. No one's guaranteed this evening. But we are guaranteed that if we put faith and trust in Jesus and repent of our sin, we will be with him in heaven. That is guaranteed because of what he did at Calvary. And if you put your faith and your trust in the one who died at Calvary for you, you too can have that same guarantee thief on the cross had. Today, you will be with me in heaven. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come at this time, Lord, if there's anyone, anyone here today, or anyone who has heard this message, uh, who is at home, or whatever, and then they truly don't know Jesus Christ, I pray today, today, Lord, that they will say unto Jesus, Lord, come into my heart. I pray that they will. In the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. If God has spoken to you and telling you, you come as we sing hymn number 308. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Plead with him not to pass you up, but to come into your heart and into your life.
as we are in the Thanksgiving time of the year, let us again not forget the greatest and wonderful gift that God has ever given to us. And that was His Son died on the cross. Always remember the cross. And not just on Thanksgiving, but the rest of our lives. Every day of our lives. It is very, very important because it is by His blood that we are cleansed and made whole as well. We invite you to come back Wednesday night. We have a prayer meeting from 6.30 to 7.30 for all. Food and fellowship from 6 to 6.30 for all who would like to come. If not, we invite you to come back next week. Bible study from 9 to 10. And then 10.30 to 11.30 or 4 till we have worship time. For all who would like to come to worship God in spirit and truth in the Bible study in the morning to discuss what is being taught from in, this, in different classes as well. Financial reports again in the back if you'd like to have one of those. If you have any questions on it, let us know. The Thanksgiving banquet list, I'll put that in the back in the foyer. You can sign up for that. Calendars, again, $5 each if you'd like to have that. The directory is in the kitchen if you'd like to look at that. If you need to make any changes, either today or even next week, it'll be there uh, on the kitchen table um, or the directory, all of that. So I pray God's blessing upon each and every one. And I pray, again, that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. If not, we pray for you. We pray that one day you will come to know him as your Lord and Savior. May God bless and be with each and every one. Now, lead us in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you, thanking you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. I know, Father, each one of us here sometimes goes through trials and tribulations. But, Father, we know that you are there with us and you're going to see us through. I pray, Lord, again, that there's anyone here that does not know you as Lord and Savior, maybe a seed has been planted, maybe it will sprout, and maybe it will grow. I pray, Lord, that we, as brothers and sisters in Christ, look after one another, help take care of them. Be with us now, we will lead to our separate ways. Bring us back to worship again together. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen.